Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, something terrifying attacks a young child, creating a scarring paranormal experience that never goes away. Unexplained ghostly children are seen and heard coming out of an abandoned barn. Plus, a doppelganger fools a son into thinking he's interacting with his mother. Those stories and more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. 855-853-4802, our phone number. You can write it on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com, or email an audio file to me direct, Tony, at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you really like our show and you want to get our bonus episode, our EPP means Extra Podcast Person Episodes, brand new ones every single week, go to ghostpodcast.com. You can also get advanced episodes of the program there when you sign up to be an EPP at only $5 a month. You get a free copy of our e-copy of our book, uh, whole lots of extras there. And the EPP episodes, I have to say, uh, we'll have a, a preview a little bit later on in the show of a recent episode. It's like EPP 2.0 type episodes is the way that I'm doing them now. Um, added a whole new way of, of creating and producing the EPP episodes. So they feel uh, different than, than the regular episodes. A lot more depth, a lot more cinematicness to it, I guess you could say. Uh, It's really cool. Uh, So anyway, we'll give you a preview of that in just a little bit. If you haven't heard an EPP episode in a while, go and check them out. A whole new sound room, of course, packed with the, the best ghost stories as usual, but a whole new way of storytelling on those EPP episodes than we've done in the past 220 some. So I thought it was kind of time for a little little upgrade over there. So I hope you guys like that. Lots of work going into those episodes every single week. Tony and Carol Hughes joining you once again. And how are you today, Carol? Well, maybe I should check out the EPP. Maybe you should. It's <laughs> I, I listened to one the other day driving after I got one uh, one of them put together. And in, it's hard to describe, but it's 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 um a lot of production into them. Uh, lots of uh, music, very cinematic. I'm not singing. I'm not singing like Celine Dion's greatest hits between the songs. Just, Although you could. I could. Uh, that It's something that may happen at some point. But it's it's very spooky, very... Um, it, it's got to check it out. It, it's it's very cool, and, and there's a whole new level to them. It takes like about four times longer than it used to to make an EPP episode. <laughs> but I, I think it's worth it because the quality is, is so improved. And not that they were bad before, but it's just... Uh, it's a whole new level. So I, I hope... It's exciting. Yeah, I, I, I am very excited about it. I hope everybody enjoys the, uh, the new feel to those episodes, because it really takes the stories... Because that's what they were always about. They were the spookiest stories we get, and and, and it takes them to a whole new level. So anyway, I don't, I'll stop going on about that, but uh, do check that out. Uh, yeah. So 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. I have something I want to complain about, and we'll do that in a little bit. First, we'll go to a story. Uh, we said, uh, could jump over to that. It was an experience I had today at a restaurant that just made me shake my head and go, what the hell is wrong with people? Um, <laughs> so uh, we'll do that after this first one. Uh, comes in, says, hi, I'm from the Philippines. This experience I had when I was a kid is still vivid as the day that it happened when I was a newly adopted by my foster parents. Both already passed away. I was four or five years old back then since it was my first day at the new house. I don't have my own room yet. So my mom made a makeshift bed out of the two big leather sofas put close together in the living room. That first night, I couldn't sleep that much. Weird things start to unfold. In front of me is a wall with this massive painting of a rural scene. Farm, huts, coconut trees. Suddenly, it became like a huge television in front of me. I watched a war scene. Sandvag, soldiers, guns, fire, chaos. And the scene blurs each time I blink, and then it's gone. And then, in one corner, I saw a little circus-like procession with drummers, miniature elephants, little circus people dancing. Then, they pass through the wall, and they're gone. Then there came the night that scared me, or scarred me for life. And I can't sleep. My mind as a kid is still hyperactive. My position is bedside, though, is beside the window. That night the moon is so bright that I'm able to see clearly inside. Suddenly a big, long, black, and hairy hand just popped through the middle of the sofa that I'm lying on. I don't know how it did it because the sofa did not move. 
hand is just there, glistening in the moonlight passing through the window. That image is still vivid to me to this day. I was so scared that time that I can't, I, I couldn't breathe. Then it's just gone. I thought, that's it. Then I felt a hand pulling my hair. I ducked down so it can't reach me. Then it pulled my feet. I crouched in a fetal position so scared. I tried screaming, but I wonder why I couldn't. I fell asleep in a fetal position. The next day, there's four claw fingernail marks on the armrest of the leather sofa that's near my head. Growing up, I had a lot of paranormal experiences, and that was scary. At one point, I felt that there's a presence that latched onto me. I have nightmares, several sleep paralysis, sudden visions, and a lot of things I can't explain. I always pray that this would stop. I don't think of being able to see things, not seen by everyone, as a gift. I don't want it because it scares me to death. Thanks, I hope I'll be able to share and hear my story in one of your episodes. I just discovered your podcast through Spotify and I'm already hooked while at work. I work at a call center as a chat advisor and your podcast keeps me company. I'm becoming an EPP very, very soon. So a hand comes through and scares the hell out of this person. It's it's interesting, just the power of of that, because that's uh, one of those things that I think runs through a lot of our minds, especially as kids. Is is the hand grabbing your feet, grabbing your hair, get your oh, leg yeah. leg hanging off the bed? Something's gonna grab it, and in this case, it actually did. Well, but the thing is, if it was a nice lady's well manicured hand, that would be one thing. <laughs> Even that if it's grabbing at you, <laughs> but that's a hairy hand, like. <laughs> And he said glistening. Yeah. So it's kind of a sweaty, hairy hand that's... Glistening you know. hand, yeah. Mm -hmm. That ain't right. Like if it was nicely manicured, <laughs> that I could handle. So you'd really, not. really be fine there as a child as long as it's like, oh, oh, look at those. Where did you get your nails done? You just like <laughs> start asking these questions. Actually, like my brain would be like as an adult. I don't know about as a kid, but as a... An adult, I'd be freaked out by the hand, but I'm like, but it's so well manicured. <laughs> Were you a hand model in life? You start asking these questions. That's amazing. It's a, it's just, that's so great. I love that. Not to mention, there's a strange hand coming through the wall, but that's and great. And then there's scratches the next day. Yeah. Like, that's just crazy. <clears throat> Something I, I don't think I'd ever want to. That would be very scarring. It would be, uh, no matter how old I get, I would never be hanging my leg off the bed or off the chair or whatever uh, in fear of something like that happening. Because I, to this day, can't have my <laughs> hand or my foot hanging outside, like, off the mattress. Really? Now, my feet have to be covered. It, That's just a given. It, it doesn't bother me anymore. I used to be a kid where I couldn't do that, but I, I think, ah, uh, no, nothing's going to happen. Maybe something like this happened to you, and you're, it's repressed, and one of these days it'll come out. Great. <laughs> but maybe... Or the hairy may hand is going to grab my foot. But maybe when it comes out, night. it'll have been a well-manicured hand, and it won't be that bad. You'll be like, oh, okay, and you'll have solved it, and you'll be all good then. What the hell? Look at those nails. Exactly. Amazing. 855-853-4802, yeah. our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. So today, um, me and Jenny were at lunch. And we, there's this this great uh, Mexican food restaurant that we go to uh, down the road quite often. We get, you know, we, we know the, the folks there, the, the owners and the staff. It's a family-run restaurant. And just good people and uh, really good food. Anyway, we are in a tourist town, so a lot of people, you know, kind of come and go. You get all, all mixes of individuals, uh, personality-wise, that come in here. And we were at kind of, it was kind of a late lunch, so we were one of the few people in the restaurant. And then these, these folks come in. And they sit down and I don't know about you, but I find it to be almost insulting or rude when the the people that come in and sit down, they are not Spanish speaking individuals, but they 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 have the knowledge of Spanish that they may have learned on Sesame Street or that their kids had learned on Sesame Street. And that's about it. But then they want to overly use it and talk really really loud with the the few words of spanish that they know <laughs> and so the 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 waiter comes over and he's like you know hi can i take your order and then this man immediately starts almost shouting at him in very limited spanish <laughs> Yes, Margarita, por favor. Yes, yes. He's like, ¿Cómo estás? I would like a, and then he, and then it's, it's like English mixed in with a little bit of Spanish in but he thinks he's being really relatable or really, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just looking at this poor waiter and he's just, he's a nice guy. He's a waiter every time. And 
he's like one table up. So he's like kind of looking around like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> and he, he looks at me and he just rolls his eyes and I just roll my eyes back at him. It's like, what the hell? And then gets the order, comes back. And then, of course, it's time to order the food. And then he has to jump back into I'm going to be really relatable because I watched three episodes of Sesame Street with my child in 1984 and I know limited Spanish. And so he goes, yes, amigo, I would like the Speedy Gonzalez. So he like picks the most, you know, <laughs> like the, the last it, it just, it's borderline like, you know, racist sounding <laughs> menu item. <laughs> And and, he, and, he, and he's like, and it comes with a, and then he, he proceeds to read off the, the description of the item. And he's like, and it comes with a taco and an enchilada. And of course, he kind of like rolls his, you know, the letters a little bit. Yeah. And a quesadilla. And he's, he's trying to like sound authentic. And it's this older man. He's probably in his... I would guess fifties or sixties. And he's like wearing Sally, Jesse, Raphael type glasses. And it's like, what the hell? And then the other people at the table, um, want to join in on the action, not quite as annoying, but then they want to start learning, uh, like getting an impromptu lesson in Spanish from the, the waiter who's just trying to get the order. And they're like, how do you say spoon in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like asking about like all the things that are the objects on the table. How do you say them in Spanish? And it's like the waiter is not, this is not a circus sideshow here. And this is not like a, a, a learned it's Spanish like, class. Me, I'll give you a damn Spanish lesson. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was just like, what is going on? And more, more importantly, what is going through someone's mind that they find this appropriate behavior that, Oh God! Anyway, <laughs> well, and it doesn't even like, like if maybe you were in Mexico, sure. If you were in a Spanish-speaking country, yeah. You know, I get you're trying to use a little bit of your Spanish. Yeah, but that wasn't this. This was a look at me. I know a few words. Hola, señor. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable. I just felt so bad. Me llamo. Hey, Carol. <laughs> I think it's me llamo. Hey, Carol. <laughs> Oh God, yeah. So that was uh, that was lunch. Great place, though. I felt horrible for our waiter and and that family. But uh, you know, you, you get every kind of uh, people that go through uh, you know <laughs> through here. So when so that crap happens, yeah, I tend to way over tip. Then I'm like, ooh, I did. I, I over <laughs> I over tip because I felt bad. Ten bucks. <laughs> I'm like he had to go through that shit because you know, at the end of the day, those people that put him through that probably tipped like. Four percent or something. Those are usually the people yeah. that don't tip well. Exactly. They're like, well, they didn't tell us how to say fork in Spanish. That's five percent off. You know? <laughs> it's like, okay. So anyway, eight five five eight five three forty eight or two. Our phone number. At Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to another story. It says, uh, let's see here. This story takes place when I was in sixth grade with my three best friends. We lived in a small city in upstate New York. When we were in fourth grade, we were in our school playground, and above us was a hill. The hill had a barn atop it and was evidently abandoned. As we were walking through, it suddenly got cold. We were at the beginning of June, and it was at least 80 degrees outside, so something told us to look up, and in the window, we saw a little girl about four years old. She wore a white dress with green flowers on it and dirty blonde hair and piercing green eyes. There was blood coming out of her neck, though. She just stared at us. She was so faded like she almost wasn't there. We ran off and told no one of what we saw. A year later in fifth grade, I was in my house when outside I saw the little girl, resembling the same little girl from the previous year, and she was holding hands with a little boy who looked exactly like her, except he was in overalls and had the same dirty blonde hair and piercing green eyes. They just stared at me. My mom was standing next to me and asked what I was staring at, and I asked if she saw what I was seeing. She said no, but they were still there. They ran away and just faded. I told my friends, and one of them said they saw the same little boy standing in her window. The other said she couldn't breathe for a while, and the last said she heard little kids laugh. All these events took place an hour apart from each other. This was just too creepy. Even stranger events have taken place in my life, and I will write in about them at another time so <laughs> how would you like that i mean that sounds like a very good example of uh childhood and and having the ability to see things that uh, the adults are not and the fact that all the kids saw it yeah 
And he said he has scarier things that have happened. Yeah, like, I would, that's a pretty scary thing. It, yeah, I mean, it's it's a perspective like, OK, well, how deep can we go here on, on scary stuff? But I guess, you know, it's, it's one of those ability things. It's, it's an interesting thing to I'm interested to hear if the ability as they got older improved or if it went away or, or you know, eroded. Or, how? Yeah. You know. Or if he had any experiences like that as he got older. Yeah, I would uh, I would like to know the answer to that. Thank you for uh, for writing that in and uh, sharing that experience with us. Okay, let's do a little uh, preview here. This is of uh, EPP episode 223 of uh, Real Ghost Stories Online. If you want to hear this and the whole new uh, revamped EPP 2.0 style episodes, uh, there's now about two or three of them that are, are fully produced and up there like this. Uh, but uh, here's a little taste of what's in uh, EPP uh, 223. And by the way, there are 200 and, uh, 223 episodes. It's just this new feel and flavor of the episodes uh, as has just begun. So here's a little preview of EPP 223. In July of 2017, my boyfriend and I, along with our two labs, rented a home in Waldport, Oregon for a week vacation to celebrate both our birthdays and our two year anniversary. Waldport is a few miles south of Newport and is not touristy like Newport at all. It reminded me of a very small retirement community. My boyfriend's best friend and wife drove from Salem to visit us for a couple of days. Now, I believe in spirits, ghosts, or whatever one may call them, but I can say that I myself have never experienced or seen anything before this. I used to say that it's because whatever higher power you may believe in knows that I wouldn't be able to handle it and has guarded me against any experience. One night, while everyone was sleeping, our dogs were in our room, our friends in the room to the left of us, and the bathroom to the right of us, the hallway in front of our door and kitchen straight ahead from there. Our door was closed due to not wanting our dogs to get out and wake our friends up. I suddenly woke up, felt dazed, and looked towards the door. At that time, the door opened enough for me to see a shadow or outline of somebody looking in our room. I could not see a face, just a black shadow. I instantly became so scared, I started to cry. I could see the shadow and then leave the doorway. I woke my boyfriend up and told him that somebody was looking in the room. He tried to reassure me that it wasn't anything. I finally was able to fall back asleep, so creeped out the rest of the time in the house. Not because I had experienced anything else but due to me knowing something was there. We asked our friends if either one of them got up during the night, and everyone said no. My dogs didn't hear anything or react at all. I know what I saw, and the instant fear and goosebumps I felt. Fast forward a year or sooner. My house, I saw the same black outline shadow again out of the corner of my eye, and it passed the side of where I was standing and walked towards the hallway. So there's a little taste of uh, EPP 223. There's five stories in that uh, episode. You can find out what happens there with the shadow person that seems to have followed this individual home uh, in all of its uh, cinematic glory. So um, good stuff. I think that sounds great. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I really never, like that. I'm having a blast producing it because I can go through and I'm trying to find, you know, music cuts that fit. Um, or background cuts that fit the scene and the feel of everything that goes on. And as the mood changes, so does the backing. And it's I'm try not trying to make it overpowering the story or anything, but just really pulling you there and 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 really kind of giving the stories a, a whole extra level of life to them. So and finding the right music is makes all the difference. It's like watching a movie. Mm -hmm. And the music sets the feel, like in that piece. The music yeah. really set that. Very much so. And uh, we have thousands of cuts to pull from. So it's it's not going to be like, here's the same music every week. Uh, it's it's really, every episode has a whole new uh, new feel to it. So anyway, check it out, ghostpodcast.com, if you want to hear that full episode. 855-853-4802 is our number. Let's go to their letter. It says, good morning, my name is Jesse. I have a lot of personal ghost stories. The first story I want to share with you was when I was three years old. Lived in a three-bedroom home in a city of Anaheim, California. It was a house we rented 
my uh, father until my father found a better job. The rent was cheap. My parents didn't think much of it. My dad made my older brothers a room where they can play video games, have friends over after school. I'm three at the time. I believed it was, and I believe it was my room too. So I went to turn the TV on and watch Bananas and Pajamas when I heard the door open and saw my older brother in his J-R-O-T-C uniform looking through some uh, drawers. I was so happy I wasn't the only child home. I called him Junior, and I said, Junior, you're back from school. Do you want to play? My brother didn't reply. Instead, he growled. So I continued watching my show. I didn't think it was weird at the time, so he walked towards the end of the room with his back facing me. I couldn't see his face. I asked him again, Junior, let's play. I want to play with you. I think he got annoyed with me, so he turned around, and it was not my brother. It was a scary-looking, ghost-like figure that seemed to be dressed like my brother. I yelled and ran towards the door, and everything seemed to go in slow motion. The playroom led into the kitchen where I saw my mother cooking. I ran to her crying and told her I saw Junior, but it wasn't Junior. When she looked down at me, it was another ghost that looked like my mother. I'll never forget her sharp teeth trying or looking like it might bite me. At that point, my real human mom, if you will, walked out from her room and found me crying and screaming when she got close to me. I don't recall what happened next. She told me when I was older, I was crying so much, the police came to the house to see why I was crying. They believed I was being abused. Eventually, my dad called a priest, and that's when things started to appear to the rest of my family. The lights would flicker, the stove would turn on, the closets would slam in the same house. I remember playing in my room with my sister's Barbies. I remember looking at the closet and hearing a voice. I wanted to open the door. I continued playing, and then the closet door opened. My mom so happened to hear the door in my room, and she came to check on me. She gave me, she gazed at me and then went outside. History about the closet in my room. My dad had permanently locked the closet door since it was broken and hard to move the door. My mom and dad recalled hearing a baby crying from that closet. The priest came a couple of times, but things got worse for my parents after that. Shortly, we moved to my grandma's house. So my father got another house. I have more stories that continue to happen to me. When I was six, staying with my aunt, I had to sleep in the room with my cousins, Mary Lynn and Doss. I slept at the end of Mary Lynn's bed, and around 4 a.m. I had to get up and go to the, the bathroom. When I reached the door, I saw a black figure standing in the doorway. Its head was up to the top of the doorframe. I could see that it was looking, and its eyes were just black holes. But I could sense that there was life behind them, and it was watching me. I ran over to my cousin's bed, trying to wake her up. I shook her and shook her all the while, looking at her, and then the door with the thing that was standing there grinning, and I couldn't see it. I didn't have feet, but I don't know how or if I saw it or if I realized it. And somehow I just knew finally, I then went back to bed. After my cousin wouldn't wake up and the thing was still watching me, I went back to bed and vomited all over my pillow. I couldn't move. I finally fell asleep and woke up in my own vomit. My troubles were not over. My mom had once told us kids that she was a white witch, but we didn't believe her. Later in life, my mom was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Through all this, I had bad dreams. I had a bad dreams of demons coming to drag me out of my room one night. My sister, who crawled in my bed, uh, told me that she, was, uh, she had a dream about demons, clothes, and it scared her. Then I moved away and came back to visit my parents, and I stayed home one day. While they went shopping, I was on the couch, and my dog ran to the bottom of the steps and started barking. Suddenly, I hear a chair being scooted across the floor. I knew it wasn't human. There was no way to get upstairs. I got a Bible, the dog, and sat in the car till my parents came home. My last event, which took place 12 years ago, I saw my niece at Walmart. I was looking for clothes, and suddenly I hear, Aunt Mary. As I turned and saw my niece, Tina, walking towards me for a second, her face seemed to change to death. I mean, a face I just knew was my niece's death, and her death was coming. But I didn't say that to her. But I ran home and screamed and cried to my sons and husband that I saw death in Tina's face. Tina was murdered seven days later. Her throat was cut. I'm not mentally ill. I've only told this to my children and grandkids. Maybe I told them to warn them in case there was an entity tormenting us or we have the gift. My mother was normal until she was 41. Schizophrenia usually comes on in the middle 30s to 40, with exceptions. She tried to tell stories about her experiences before her illness, but we didn't listen. We should have. There you go. That would be a very very troubling uh, thing to be going through, especially when you have something like that that runs in your family. You're halfway wondering, is this an illness that's coming on or am I experiencing these things still? 
Well, and schizophrenia can be like that. Like yeah. you are 100% sure it happened. Because I had a friend who was schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. and, and she 100% believed the things that she thought she was seeing. Sure. But the one that, like, what would really bother me, like all of those would bother me. Mm -hmm. But seeing someone and then having that premonition of they're going to die. Yeah. That would freak me out. Yeah. And then to have that person get murdered. Ah. And you get the confirmation. Yeah. It's not the confirmation you want that your uh, your sixth sense is is accurate uh, when you know that that's uh, that that's the only way to confirm it is if something horrible like that happens. And how do you. I mean, it's one thing when someone's sick and yeah. and you get that weird feeling like I need to get there or. Mm -hmm. But to have that feeling and see that person who's healthy. Yeah. Oh, and how do you, how do you how do you bring that up when you're you know hanging out at the Walmart you know looking at Keds you know you're like hey I love aren't these these Keds lovely I, these are great I love the color hey by the way I think you're probably gonna die I saw you kind of look like death as you came over is that a sale over there on the smoked you, turkey meat <laughs> like and if you were to like could it even be prevented then I don't know I mean I I if someone told that to me I'd be like. I don't know what to do other than lock myself in my house more than I'm I normally do. I'm not leaving do. my home for a really long time. <laughs> Which somebody may assume that people are telling me that every day because I basically do that on a weekly basis. I just kind of stay home <laughs> and never leave. Uh, <laughs> but but even then, I mean, there's plenty of ways that you could get killed in your house. You know, there's things that could fall on you. A chandelier could be whatever. You know, there, there's just so many, many possibilities. <laughs> it's like there's no way to... Uh, I think it's when it's when it's your time, it's your time, and uh, it will find you. It's like the Final Destination movies where they cheat death, and then death comes back to find them. And there was one of them, like The Omen or something like that. Some, mm -hmm. I can't remember what movie it was. They have these premonitions that something's going to happen, and then it does. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't ever want that to happen to me. There was ever, uh, ever. ever. There's a uh, something really, I would say, interesting, but uh, it is somewhat interesting and scary all at the same time. Uh, there's uh, a restaurant clubhouse near here and um, big dining room, big, uh, big uh, atrium. You know, they have like a lot of weddings and stuff in there. Um, and there's a giant chandelier that that hangs or should I say hung uh, in the middle of it. I mean, just giant wrought iron thing. And. Uh, a couple, well, it's probably a couple months ago now. Uh, luckily, uh, there was no banquet or anything going on at the moment, but the chandelier just fell, broke off the thing, <laughs> and crashed onto the tables. And in the the lower portion of this building, there's a, a bar and grill, and so they're all people are down there and they hear this you know, bang. Sounds like something exploded upstairs, and they go and find the chandelier to crash right under the table. Had it happened a day earlier, there was like a table of you know seventy plus. Um, you know, women that were having a, some sort of a, a get together, uh, and it would have crashed right on them. And it's, oh my god! It's like oh wow. But uh, yeah, and, and that that I don't you know that would not have been a very survivable event had the parts of it landed on you because it's uh, it was huge. So, oh. <laughs> but that, that is like something right out of the omen. It is, and it's just like oh my god. I mean, they they use that room all the time for stuff and. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they need a new chandelier now. Uh, 855-853-4802, our number. Let's go to one caller here. Hi, you are on the air. Hi, yeah. So uh, I hope you guys can hear me all right. Uh, yeah, my name's Ryan. I'm 21 years old. Um, so I've got a couple, but I I want to tell you guys, I guess, the most recent two I've, I've experienced. Uh, last, not last July, but... Two years ago in July, I took a school trip out to Wyoming, and uh, I can't remember exactly the name of this hotel, but it's out in Wyoming. It's deemed one of the most haunted hotels, you know, out, out in Wyoming, of course. But um, I had a different experience there. I mean, we're going in there, it's a group of us. We had probably, I want to say, 12 of us, 10 or 12 of us. And um, so we're out there for a geology school trip, and we're out here at this lovely hotel and i mean of course we all know it's been deemed as haunted so we're all interested in what's going on um first day there you know we're looking around trying to get some stories understand 
what all has happened there, what, what, what's going on. And so we all, you know, we're talking to the employees. They tell us a couple of their stories and tell us to go look around. And they, they don't mind. They say, stay out. What did you want wandering the hotel? We don't mind. People do it all the time. So we're doing that. I'd say it's probably around 12, 12 a.m. We have to leave the next morning to move on to somewhere else in Wyoming. But at 12 a.m., we're all walking around, looking at, looking at things. And, and we're as a group. So this is like 12 of us in a group walking around this hotel looking. And uh, me, my buddy, me and two of my, my friends, we decide to uh, play a trick, right? And um, there's only one one door that leads up to our hotel rooms, and it, it's been wide open the whole time. So we decide to go up there, shut the door, sitting there holding the door, so it makes makes it seem like the door is shut. It can't get in. Something's going on. I'm sitting there holding the door knob tight, as tight as I can. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm a pretty strong guy. Not gonna, not gonna lie, but uh, as I'm sitting there holding this doorknob to where it can't move, to where they can't open this door. All of a sudden, we hear footsteps coming up the steps, so, you know, we're expecting these people to try to open the door. And at that point, there's nine of them. And um, so I'm sitting there, we're, me and my friend are holding this door shut and holding the doorknob, and uh, the doorknob twists in my hand. And I, I have, like, a death grip on this doorknob. This doorknob twists in my hand, makes my whole wrist twist, everything. Turns the doorknob with me locked on it. I give it three seconds, not even. I pull that door wide open because no one gave any push. The door just, the doorknob just twisted. So no one gave any push, so I opened up the door and no one was standing there. That was weird, you know, move on. Um, next one is, it's around 3 a.m., We've all been to sleep. We all went to sleep around 2 a.m. So well, about 3 a.m. And uh, I, mean, I I go to sleep in my boxers. Next thing I know, I wake up. And uh, since we were leaving the next day or whatever, I wake up. And um, I'm I'm standing out in the hallway with my, my bags. <sighs> standing out in the hallway with my bags. I'm hearing chatter downstairs in the lobby. And it's really loud chatter nothing distinctive or anything but it's really loud and so i decided to look at my phone see what time it was i pulled my phone out and it's 3 a.m i used to sleep sleepwalk a lot and i haven't done it probably in 10 years or so and um so i woke up at 3 a.m hearing people downstairs my back my bag was fully clothed fully packed i was fully clothed I went to sleep in my boxers, and my bag was totally not packed. And that was definitely a strange event. Um, one of my most recent ones, it was probably two or three months ago, I was watching my friend's house while they were out of town. I was watching uh, his house and his two dogs. And I, as I'm laying on the couch, it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Um, I hear some noise in the kitchen. Sounds like, at first it sounded like the AC kicking on wasn't too weird about it and then i noticed one of the dogs staring into the kitchen hair raised hair raised he he was not happy looking in the kitchen i'm sitting there and i'm trying to get his attention next thing i know i'm hearing some uh like what it sounds like a cabinet but cabinet kind of open and shut what it really sounds like is a dog going in there and you know pulling it open with his nose and then backing up and the door shuts really quick but then i heard the drawers open heard the drawers open and so at that point, I was like, it's time to get out of here. <laughs> so I went to the uh, extra bedroom, tried to go to sleep, realized, you know, I need something to drink. So I go out into the kitchen where all the noise is occurring, and uh, cabinets were wide open, drawers were wide open. And it just freaked me completely out. So I turned around, ran back into the extra bedroom. I left the TV on just so there's some light and some noise going on outside of the room. And as soon as I step foot in that extra bedroom for the second time, after I get my water, the TV shuts off. And, you know, I asked the homeowner, I asked my friends about, you know, if they've ever experienced anything. My friend, he has never, he said uh, he's never experienced anything, but his girlfriend that lives there as well, she definitely said she has. She's heard some stuff. She tries to ignore it. She tries to play it off. But um, I, I totally let her know her house is haunted. But, um, you know, I, re- I really uh, apologize for the flow. 
of all this. I've got a couple more stories. Uh, when I was out in Wyoming, um, it was in the morning before we left, and we went to a coffee shop, and I came back, and there were, you know, I was sharing a uh, hotel room with four, four other men. And so I knew that bathroom was going to be locked up. So I decided to go down to the bathroom in the lobby. And there's only one stall in there. There's no urinal or anything. There's one stall, old wood, old wooden stall, one one toilet. You know, you got to flush it physically, got to flush it for it to go down. And um, so after I used the restroom or whatever, I was washing my hands. The next thing I know is I, I hear the door creak on the uh, stall. No big deal, nothing. Not worried about it. Old, old hotel, old bathroom, wood stall. No big deal. So as I came okay, on washing my hands, next thing I know is I hear the uh, toilet flush. Turn around and ran out of there with soap all over my hands. <laughs> well, guys, I, I really appreciate listening to your podcast. Uh, y'all, are, y'all are definitely interesting. You come out with some interesting things. You know, I, I have such a, a respect for the supernatural. They're definitely here. And um, need to do what we can to embrace it. All we're going to do is piss them off, and it's going to be uh, bad at the end of the day. But um, I appreciate you guys listening to uh, me talk. Yeah. I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks so much. Scariest hotel you've ever stayed at. I don't like the scary hotels. <laughs> you know, I tried to avoid them. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be scary for ghostly I reasons. I find out if I ever go to Wyoming, I don't want to stay in that one. <laughs> it doesn't have to be ghostly reasons either. What would, it, it could be just, you know, sketchy <laughs> reasons uh, as to why it was scary. You know, I stayed um, in the Palmer House mm-hmm. in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And that is a very old hotel that has a lot of history to it. And that one felt super creepy really and there's another one too that's super creepy it's like in in chicago it's um gosh darn i can't think of the name of it you can get rooms for pretty cheap because it's pretty creepy but it has like this magnificent ballroom in it and like it's just it's it's over the top ornate but the rooms are cheap because it's haunted yeah nobody wants to stay there and because they haven't done the rooms up in a really yeah. long time. But other than that. <laughs> and you might that get an STD just too. sleeping in the bed. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a nice uh, nice uh, added touch there to a hotel. You know, we stayed in a hotel in Des Moines, my sister and I. So we get there, and it's an old hotel, and they're in the middle of renovating it. So we go, we check in, and we go to the elevator. And before we got to the elevator, the door just opened. And we're like, huh, that's nice. So we just get on and we go up to our room, come back down, went out for dinner, come back before we get to the to the elevator door to press the button, the door opens again. There's nobody around. And um, so we get in, we're like, that's weird. Like, do they have some kind of sensor or something on this? It's a really old hotel. So the third time we come walking up and I'm like, Okay, if this door opens again, I'm going to crap my pants. And um, door opens again, third time. (laughs) So we go up on the elevator and we're like, you are the best elevator man ever. Because this is an old hotel that would have had an elevator man at one time. Sure. So we're like, you're a great elevator man. We're talking to whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you are really awesome. And thank you for taking such good care of us. So the next day we're coming down and we step off the hotel and we realize that they had – like a, I don't know, some kind of display behind glass of different things from the hotel's history. Sure, sure. So we're like, well, look at that. We haven't even noticed it. And right there, it had this little card, and it was, I can't remember his name now, but it was your friendly elevator man. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. They had like a friendly elevator ghost. And, he's and like there. there wasn't necessarily, Necessarily anything creepy about it, but it is at the same time when sure. doors shouldn't be opening for you by themselves. Yeah. But so I think that I think that um, hotel in Des Moines has a friendly elevator ghost. That sounds like a neat place to stay. I, I'd be curious about that. I'd say one of the creepiest hotels I stayed at. I was a kid. Uh, it was in Michigan, and it was called. I, I think the place still exists, and I think they've they've renovated, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, but this was in 1994 ish, 93, 94, um, and it was called the Normandy. 
And it, I mean, it, number one, the place looked like some place Norman Bates would be running. Uh, and then you had the, the name of it of what it is. And uh, went there. And um, again, this is 93. And so it, it, it was very much, I don't think they had updated it since like the 50s or the 60s. And their big old shag carpet. It was a black and white television. Um, it, it was It was just, it, it kind of smelled like, death or something or somebody died and i don't know it was it was beyond must uh but uh, my my parents got it it was it was a cheap room a cheap hotel and i think everything I, I remember driving around a lot uh and trying to see did they have a, a room here a room there and it was a tourist area and um every place was completely booked up so it was kind of like what was left and uh it was a scary night we 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 got there and my my parents are checking in and uh at the little you know counter in the little room cuz this place picture the Bates motel and they're like oh would you like to to get a free upgrade we can upgrade you to our our deluxe suite tonight <laughs> and my parents are like ooh, ooh this sounds lovely we're going to get the suite and all the suite means is there's a wall and a room that the other bed is in. Uh, so it's like when one person gets murdered, the other people don't realize it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's like no like, ooh, hot tub. No, nothing like that. It's just like maybe a little less pubic hair to be found <laughs> in, in the tub oh. when you're checking <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's kind of funny because over the years I've I've just you know, morbidly curiosity like look this place up and I think it, it it's like the, somebody else got it they've renovated it now now they like they play on the retroness and have fun and make it nice uh, but back then oh my god <laughs> it was uh, it was an experience nobody died although I I I, I don't know if I, I was pretty young maybe I had a sibling once and maybe they died in that hotel I don't know but. Um, there you go. It was a. I have uh, to have that conversation with your parents, Mom. It seemed like I had like a brother for a long time, and then after that night, they were gone. What, what's what's up with that? <laughs> you know? And but they're just gonna blame it on the hotel. They're like, well, you know, we got the suite. It all kind of came out in the wash. It makes up for it. Then we left and we forgot about it. It was all good. It wasn't worth complaining about. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, 855-853-4802, our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. That's going to wrap up today's uh, episode of the program. If you like the show and you want to get the bonus episodes, go to ghostpodcast.com. You can also sign up through Patreon. The link is there at ghostpodcast.com. Get access to all 223 or so uh, EPP bonus episodes. I think it's probably even more than that by the time this thing airs. So check it out. All new feel to the EPP episodes. Really awesome feel. If you haven't uh, listened to him in a while, I think you're really going to like him. Uh, ghostpodcast.com. Until next time, for Carol Hughes and Tony Bruschi, thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.